Today, I'm excited to reveal a case study with a print-on-demand e-commerce client. They hired me to help them with their Facebook and Instagram ads. I'm gonna be going over everything and trying to break down the reasons why we succeeded so that you can also apply it to your business. And when you're running Facebook and Instagram ads, I know it can be confusing at first to know what to do and how to structure things. So I wanted to make this video specifically to help people understand what worked for us. Here's a couple screenshots to show you the before and afters. And and then I'm gonna break down the campaign structure for testing new products at a lower budget because we don't want to have a high budget whenever we're testing because if it doesn't work, then a lot of our profitability goes down the drain. So I'm also gonna talk about the retargeting structure so we can recapture those add to carts and the window shoppers who come in and they want to purchase, they just need an extra shove, an extra push to purchase. So I'm gonna teach you how to set up the retargeting structure for that. The exact lookalike audience strategy and custom audiences so that you can pinpoint the best potential buyers for your business and for your products. The offers that unlocked this client's success. So again, this entire video is gonna be about the things that worked for this client and then how to apply them to your business. And then bonus number one, horizontal scaling, You're going to be able to scale anything that's working for you and make even more money without disrupting the original campaign. Whereas vertical surfing strategy is a little bit more advanced. We'll talk about that more later, but you're gonna be able to scale up really fast far really fast with that strategy. The cold testing campaign structure, you have one campaign for each product and then five ad sets with different interests. Now your interests that you choose are going to change based off of what you're selling. So for example, for this client, they're in the patriotic second amendment type niche. So here's what their products sort of looked like. I can't show you their exact products and I can't tell you the exact brand because I want to protect that client's confidentiality. That's essentially what they were selling, leather patch caps and hats, jerseys with flags, um, baseball jerseys, football jerseys, um, hockey jerseys, things of that nature. And so we'll talk more about the products that they were selling, but the interests that they chose for their ad sets were essentially centered around these um, people that would be interested in those types of products. So if you're selling a pet product, choose Petco and pet owner and the various interests that come up for someone that is more likely to purchase something related to a pet product. So it, it, it helps to find celebrities and newspapers or magazines and different types of interests that fit for what you're trying to sell. So you're gonna need to change that for your five ad sets and make that for whatever you're trying to sell and fit your niche. And then three identical ads in each ad set. So what you're gonna wanna do is set up your first three ads inside of your first ad set, set the budget to $5 per day for these ad sets, and then you're gonna wanna duplicate from there. And when you duplicate, you can just change your interest to another interest, hit publish, and you'll be good to go. So this is the basic campaign structure for cold testing. Let me know if you have questions about that, but essentially you're going to let this run for three days. Your ad sets are going to spend $15 a piece and any ad set that does not get purchases at $15 after three days, you're going to want to turn it off. And anything else that you have that does have purchases, that does have momentum on either add to carts or purchases, you're going to want to leave that on because that is going to continue to generate positive momentum for you, more customers, more traffic to your website. So that's the essential cold testing campaign structure. You're going to launch ad sets, launch products, launch ads, and you're not only going to turn off ad sets, but you're also going to want to go into the ad level and turn off any ads that are underperforming. So if you see that ad one is getting 20 cents cost per click, ad two is getting 40 cents, and ad three is getting two dollars cost per click, you're probably going to want to turn off ad three unless you have purchases. If, if, if it has purchases, that's the most important thing. You know, your ROAS, if that's profitable, your cost per click doesn't matter as much. You're going to want to optimize your ads after your ads have spent $15 as well. So if, if ad number one is generating purchases, then you're going to want to continue using that because it's working for you. If ad two and three flopped and didn't work for you, move on, cut those and move on. The retargeting structure, you're gonna have one campaign, five ad sets, and we, we set up five different custom audiences inside of this retargeting campaign. So we took our best three creatives. We also set up one product carousel with several different products that a customer can swipe through. And then in the ad copy, we offered 10% off to come back and complete their purchase. 
So you'll want to create custom audiences and the custom audiences you'll want to create are Facebook all post engagement 90 days, all ad engagement 90 days, all website visitors 30 days and add to cart 30 days. Now these are the main custom audiences that I would focus on. You can also do all website visitors for the last 30 days. You can also do view content for the past 30 days. It's slightly different than all website visitors but you can do view content as well. And each of these custom audiences are that's what you're going to use for your ad sets. So for the cold campaign, we were using essentially interests. Now we're going to be using these custom audiences. So I have other videos on how to set up these custom audiences, but essentially after three days, again, if there are no purchases, turn it off at the ad or ad set level. And you're going to want to probably offer a 10% coupon or offer free shipping in your ad copy with your retargeting ads, just to give your customers that extra nudge, that extra push forward, because they were already interested. They were already warm. They just need a reminder to come back and finish shopping and maybe give them a small incentive to do so. So the lookalike audiences, right? What do we need for lookalike audiences and what are they? We essentially need 25 purchases a week at least before we want to start looking at lookalike audiences. And we're essentially we're setting up a mirror that we're passing customers by this mirror and Facebook is going to try and match people that look exactly like them. So that's pretty much it's in the name. It's what it sounds like. We're going to be setting up audiences that look like people who have already purchased from us or people who have already engaged with our brand or our website in ways that we care about. So add to cart is significant to us. We would wanna still create lookalike audiences centered around people who have added to cart on our website. So you're gonna use your custom audiences to create lookalikes. So you start with your custom audience first and then create a lookalike from there. You're gonna create a 1%, a 1% to 5% and a 5 to 10% for United States for purchase 30 days, add to cart 60 days, view content 90 days, all page and ad engagement for 90 days, and video view 75% for 90 days. So anyone that's watched 75% of your videos recently over the last 90 days, that is also a high potential audience that you're going to want to create lookalike audiences around. So the 25 purchase per week rule, that only applies to purchases. You would essentially change this to apply for whatever you're going for. So if it's add to carts, it would be 25 add to carts per week. If it's view content, you know, 25 visitors per week. So you can create lookalike audiences fairly early on in your journey. The hardest one to get to yet the most valuable to have is purchases, but keep going with Facebook and Instagram ads and you'll get to 25 purchases a week in no time. So let's talk about offers. You can incentivize your customers and essentially turn something that may not work. It may not convert initially, but you can make it convert if you have a good offer. So for example, buy a baseball jersey, get another jersey 50% off. Not bad. What I see pretty often inside of print on demand is people like to do like 50% off just for no reason. And, and they just inflate the price and then market 50% off. And that can work. But I would say that most customers have been kind of desensitized to the strategy at this point. So you're probably going to want to get just a bit more creative with how you actually set up these offers. So one that can really work well is buy one, get one free and you'll want to adjust your price to make sure that you can still uh, profit from that offer. But people that were already interested in buying multiples, that's a good way to secure the sale. So for example, on one of my personal websites, not to get off topic too far, the main strategy that I have is to incentivize the customer to always be wanting to add another item to their cart because each item they add to cart, they actually save more money. So very frequently, I can increase the average order order value up to 200, 300, 400, 500 dollars. And it's purely because these customers are saving a lot of money as well. And they feel incentivized to go ahead and take me up on that offer and go ahead and buy from my website. So some other offers that we used with this specific client get a free hat with any order. So by giving something away for free, I've, I've even had a lot of success with a free surprise. You don't even have to tell the potential customer what they're getting. If you just tell them that they're going to get a surprise worth 
worth $20, then a lot of the times that's enough to give them an incentive to purchase. So I always think of it as there's risk in the customer's mind and then there's reward. And if you can increase the reward and lower the risk as much as possible, then you're gonna lead to a conversion. But if on the other hand, the risk goes up too far for your customer and the reward is too low, then they're going to abandon your website, they're gonna abandon cart, and then you're going to pay for that traffic but not actually get any sales, which is what we wanna avoid. So, you know, another another offer that we had, get free shipping for orders over $80. Again, we're incentivizing the customer to earn their reward. So they, they're saving money, they probably were already going to spend over $80 anyway, and because they are going to take that action, we're going to reward them with free shipping. So these are the offers that worked for this brand. I hope that you can craft a unique offer for yourself. If you want to learn more about offers, let me know and I'll make a specific video on all the different types of offers that are available to us that can help us convert our potential customers. Let's talk about the winning creatives really quickly. Our creative strategy really took off when we started using reviews, pulling photos from customer reviews and also outsourcing to influencers for video reviews. This has like a very user generated content feel and I've talked about this before in the channel. Essentially, it makes it fit the platform without it feeling like an advertisement and you have way better success, way better engagement, way it costs less overall, the more engagement you get. So this strategy, pulling from our, our photo reviews and then also outsourcing to influencers, we would send them a free product and then the, the brand in return would get videos and photos that they could use on their social media, on their product page, on their Facebook and Instagram ads. So you can also use your customer review text in your cold advertising and retargeting. So if you have someone that leaves a really positive positive testimonial on your website, on your product page, be sure to use that as part of your review text, test it out, see if it works well on your ads. So the back end marketing funnel, this is where a lot of the profit was made. Yes, they made profit on the front end with just the marketing on Facebook and Instagram, but they made a lot of money um, through SMS marketing and email marketing by basically upselling those existing customers. And then also through retargeting and recovering those customers. So both of these channels, both SMS marketing and email marketing had a retargeting funnel for, you know, for SMS, it would be three days after the delivery of the product. They would ask for a review in exchange for a 10% coupon, but they would also have a retargeting campaign for abandoned carts where after a few hours of someone abandoning from cart, they would get a text or an email. And so again, giving them some sort of incentive, giving them some sort of reward to come back, but also just pushing out holiday campaigns, promotions, anything that you, when you have a new product, these are all really good reasons to tap into your SMS marketing and your email marketing, your text messages and your email marketing. So definitely set up set up an SMS and email marketing funnel earlier rather than later because it once you really start ramping up your Facebook and Instagram ads and once you really start scaling your business, you're going to love having these assets both on autopilot automatically sending out retargeting campaigns and having the ability to send out manual campaigns anytime you wanna do a sale or a promotion or just get extra sales and money. So bonus number one, horizontal scaling campaign structure. So when you have an ad set that is profitable and you wanna make more money because it's profitable and you just, you really want to scale it up but you don't wanna disturb the original campaign, you're gonna to want to duplicate to a new campaign and set the number of copies to five. Set to campaign budget optimization optimization, that's important, and adjust the budget to be five times what your original ad set was. So if your original ad set was at $10 a day, you're going to set the campaign budget optimization to $50 a day because you've duplicated it five times. You've duplicated your original ad set five times. After two days, turn off any unprofitable ad sets and ideally, the CBO will optimize for the best ad sets and ads. So instead of it spending equally on each ad set, it will likely choose the best ad sets and ads over time to spend money on. So make sure that you do this with something that is working for you, both ad set and ad level. Make sure that it is profitable for you 
meaning at least three days of profit, of consistent, I would say at bare minimum, five sales over three days for you to look into doing some sort of horizontal scaling. More is better. Let's talk about vertical scaling. Now, this is a strategy where you're gonna need to be available inside of Ads Manager. You have a product that is hot and you are ready to scale it up. So the goal here is going to be essentially to ride the momentum of your product, of your ads and increase the budget um, on your CBO campaign every hour by 100%. So something's working for you. You've got a campaign working. Ideally, it's campaign budget optimization. And every hour, you're going to increase that budget. Now, you should be seeing more sales come through on your store every single time you increase this budget. You should be seeing the return on your ad spend should remain stable and you should still be profitable. The goal is not to lose money. If you notice that your ROAS is starting to go down and, and it's starting to get dangerously close to unprofitable, then you're going to want to reset to the original budget. Now, if you want me to make a video on how you can follow the exact metrics that will guide you towards what's profitable and what's not, what's a good ROAS, what's a good cost per click, what's a good click through rate, let me know, I can make that video. At the end of the day, you're gonna wanna reset to the original budget. So this is important. You're surfing all day and then you're gonna wanna reset reset that budget back down to the original or as soon as your ROAS starts to decline. So this is a repeated process day after day. Normally with Facebook and Instagram ads, it's pretty hands off. You just set up the ads. Once it's converting, once it's working, you're good to go. You just can monitor it every once in a while, scale it up every couple days. But with this strategy, with your surfing strategy, you've got something that's selling really well. I would say over 50 units a day and you're ready to surf. You're ready to scale this up and increase your budget from $100 to $200 to $300. So you get the idea. This is a strategy where you're going to need to pay attention so that you don't accidentally overspend. And if you want to watch more videos on Facebook ads. I have some more videos for that. And then also be sure to join the free Facebook community. I'm sharing a lot of free stuff that I don't share here on YouTube. Me teaching classes, bringing in other experts. And if you want a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, if you want me to look at your Facebook ads, your Instagram ads, I have a Calendly link below. I would love to meet you. I'd love to schedule a time to take a look at your business, take a look at your ads and see how I can help you out. That's all I have guys. I will see you in the next video. Create something awesome. Have an amazing day. Bye.